Hello there my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. In this video, we shall be building a really simple game in C++. So this is the game that we are going to be building as you can see on the screen right now. And the objective of this game is really simple. We have this train and we also have Snoopy. Cute little Snoopy. And we have to pick up Snoopy from different locations. And while doing so, if the train intersects itself then it means that you are out so we also record the score right here and let me just play this game so that you get an idea of how it works so as you can see the score increases as you pick up snoopy and if we intersect then the game is over so that's how it works and i know there's not a really complex game or anything like that but it really helps us in understanding how linked lists work so let's go ahead and start making it but before we do that we would need to know what a linked list is so let's first look at that so yep linked lists the name itself is more than enough to understand what linked lists are so linked lists have a list of nodes and these nodes are connected to each other in some way and these nodes carry some data within themselves and yep so that's basically what linked lists are and as you can see in this diagram i've just illustrated how linked lists work so this is the node right here which has data and each node points to another node or two other nodes depending on whether it's a singly linked list or a doubly linked list so here we are going to be concentrating on doubly linked lists so there are two connections so this one points to the left node and this points to the right node and the end nodes point to null so that's what linked lists are and yep so how are we going to use linked lists in our program so to understand that we will have to come to this part so our program has the train which is a linked list and the train has the first node which is the head node and the last node which is the tail node and all these are the middle nodes which are connected to each other so the reason why we are going to use linked list for this is because we are going to animate the movements of the train using some concepts of linked list so in linked list we can delete the first or the last node or insert a node at the first or at the end so in this case we will be making the train move by constantly removing the last node and adding it to the beginning in every frame of the game we will be removing this tail and adding it in front of the head and so on then this will come in the first and so on so it'll be like the train is moving towards the right or towards the left depending on where you move it so I hope you guys got a basic idea of what linked lists are and why we are using them in this project. So now in order to get started with making the game, we need to know some conventions that most game programmers follow while making a game. So let's go ahead and understand how that works. So this is the basic structure that all games, most games run on. And let me just explain what all of this is. So every game has a run method and this method is called in the main function of your main.cpp or source.cpp in our case. So when you call this function then the game starts running and this function has a main while loop and this while loop is an infinite while loop which runs as long as the window is open. So this is the game loop and this game loop has two functions in it the render function and the update function. So in every game, there are going to be stuff like images or characters or backgrounds which need to be put onto the screen every single frame. So that's what the render function does. So it draws the required stuff on the screen and the update functions. In every frame, we have to check if some conditions are met or if some change has to happen. In our case, we have to move the train and we have to detect collisions and stuff all that logic goes into the update function. So this is the basic structure that we are also going to follow in our game. So once we have understood this, we can go ahead and look at how we can implement it. In this video, like my other videos, I will not be typing and explaining at the same time because that would take a lot of time. This time we will be using a game library called SFML in C++ to build our game and this library can be downloaded from their official website and it can be set up using the instructions provided there. The links will be in the description. And all the code that we are writing here will be obviously be present in my GitHub repository. So you can check that out as well. 
The links will again be in the description. So, assuming that you have downloaded and installed SFML and set up SFML for your project, we can go ahead and create a C++ file in this project. And as you can see here on my screen, source.cpp has been created. So, now first thing we will have to implement the update, render and run methods. So, for that we will have to create a new class. So, that will create a header file and a cpp file for us. So, as you can see here, we have declared the three important methods, update, render and run, and we will be implementing these in the game.cpp file. Next, we will go ahead and create the node structure and as I said earlier, the node structure is going to store the data of the node and also point to the left and the right nodes. So, we have an error here because sf is the namespace from sfml and we have to include the required header file. So, we'll do just that and yep. In order to make things simple for us, we will be type defing this struct node to capital node so that we can just use this whenever we want to refer to the struct node. Next, we have this enum which defines different directions. So, up will be 0, down will be 1, left will be 2 and right will be 3. So, since we have these directions, we don't need to refer to these directions by their numbers but using the names up, down, left and right. Next, we will declare these two important methods called insert head and delete tail. So, these methods are going to act as the building blocks of our train animation. If you look at this, this is the head of the train and this is the tail of the train. So, we are going to implement the forward movement by inserting a node at the head and deleting a node at the tail so that the train looks like it is moving. So, that's what these two functions are going to do. So, this is the basic setup and now we can go ahead and implement our first two functions that is the insert head and delete tail functions. So, as you can see, I'm in game.cpp and first thing I'll do is to include the sfml graphics library and then we can go ahead and implement these two methods. So, as you can see on the screen right now, the insert head method is quite a big function and all it does is inserts a new node at the head position of the link list and it also updates the head to the new head. Here, we are allocating memory for the new node. Next, we are setting the position of the node based on the direction of the head. And as you can see here, we are getting an error here because side is a constant and we have to define this constant over here. Just like that. I have defined side as 15 which works best for me. Then we set the direction of the, of the new node and we set the sprite of the new node and we specify the left and right links. And we also make sure that the current head points to the new node. And then we return the temporary node and this temp node will be our new head. So that's what this function is going to do. Now, let us look at the delete tail function. So, the delete tail function is fairly simple. All it is doing is updating the value of the penultimate node as the tail and freeing up the space of the tail node. And it also returns the penultimate node which is the new tail node. So, that's what delete tail is doing. So, now that we have implemented these two methods, we can go ahead and implement our next method which is the update method. So, let's go to game.cpp. So, here we have the update method and the update method is responsible for calling the insert head and delete tail methods every frame so that we have the nice smooth animation. And we also have this set of statements which check if the train's head has hit the boundaries of the screen. If the train has hit the right end of the screen then its value is set to 0 and if it has hit the left end its value is set to 810 which is the right end of the screen and so on. So, that's what this set of statements do. The reason we are getting errors here and here is because we haven't declared these in our class. So, that's what we are going to do. Just like that. And that should do it. So, that's our update method for now. So, the next thing that we will be doing is we will have to create a screen. So, for that we will have to create an object of the render window class. Just like that. So, for now we have just created the object of the render window class called window but we haven't yet created a window. So, for that we will have another important method called the start method. So, the start method is going to do some stuff before we even open the window. So, it's responsible for setting up the sprites, loading stuff and stuff like that. And in the start method at the end we are going to create a window. So, let's implement the start method. So, here we have the implementation of the start method and all this method does for now is just creates a window. 
and this method is obviously going to be called by the run method so let's go ahead and implement the run method so there it is this is the implementation of the run method and for now it just calls the start method but we know that the run method is also supposed to call the render and update every frame but we will go to that in a few minutes and we shall also have the empty while loop here so that we can actually see what's on the screen while the window is open so once you have done this much then you should be able to go to the source.cpp create a create an object of our game class and call the run method and if you run this you should see an empty screen like this so this is the first step that we have taken towards creating this game so now that we have a screen we can go ahead and implement our render method so there we go so this is our render method and the render method always starts with a window dot clear and ends with a window dot display these are mandatory and the stuff here is just that we are iterating through the nodes in the linked list and setting their positions and just drawing them on the screen but note that we are not yet dealing with sprites which we will come to in a few minutes yep that's what we are doing in this render method and this error is because we again haven't declared current in our class so we will just declare it over here so that should solve our problem so now that we have implemented the render method we can go ahead and call this method inside the run function inside the while loop as we have discussed earlier so now you should get this black screen and that is because of the window dot clear because it clears the window every frame next we can go ahead and look at how our animation looks by creating our sprites i created my sprites by taking an image from the internet and adding my own spice to it then i created a sprite sheet like this so once you've got the sprite sheet you have to put it in your folder like this so my sprite sheet is called train sprite.png so now that we've got our sprite sheet we can load the sprite sheet and put it onto our train sprite so for that we will have to create another function called the load sprite function and the load sprite function will just load the textures and set it to the sprites we first declare it like this over here and then define it in our game.cpp file so the reason we have got these two errors is because we haven't again declared them in our class so just like that and now we see that the squiggly lines are gone so first we are loading the sprite sheet from our directory and then we are setting the texture to the sprite and then we will set the scale and we are setting the origin and loading the file from memory should always be done before we have created the window so we will call the load sprites function just like that and now in order to look at our animation we will have to call the update method and we'll just not call update method inside the while loop because that would be very fast and we don't want that so we will have to slow it down a bit and we can do that by using two variables called speed and count so let's declare speed and count in our class so speed is going to keep track of the number of while loop after which we are going to call each update function so in this case after every 200 while loop iterations we will be calling the update function and count is used to check if we have reached the speed so now we can have an if statement here to check if 200 has been reached and then call the update function just like that and also since we are doing this the count has to be reset after every time update is called so we will reset count to zero in the update function so next we will be concentrating on the render function again and that is because if you remember we are only setting the position and not the sprites so we need to set the sprites so that we can see them on the screen so for that we would have to have separate functions for setting the head sprite and the tail sprite so let's go declare them in our class so there you go here we have declared the set trailing sprite and set head sprite two different functions 
and all we have got to do now is to implement these two. So let's go to game.cpp and implement them. So first we have the set head sprite function and this function will set the sprite of the head node based on its direction. That is if it's up we have a different sprite as you might have seen from the sprite sheet and the same goes for down left and right as well. Notice that we have a problem here that is size and size is a constant so we will have to define it as well. So for me the value 208.5 works the best because according to my sprite sheet that is the space occupied by each sprite. Next we have the set trading sprite function and this function is quite similar to the head sprite function and all it does is set the sprite of the node based on its direction. So once we have got the set head sprite and set trailing sprite functions we can go ahead and use them in our render function. So first let us call the set head sprite function and then we will set the sprites for the remaining nodes that is other than the head and that's why we have got the if statement here. So once we have done this much then it's time for us to test how our animation looks. So for that we will have to first create a head node which we have not done so far and that is because initially we at least need the head to be present so that we can see our animation. So we will have to do that in the start method because that code should run before the window has been created. So let's go to our start method and create our head node. So we have created the head node here assigned all the required values and set the sprite and we have assigned the value for tail too. So now we have the head and tail both are pointing to the same node and now if we run the game we should be able to see this nice little animation. So it looks really cool and that's that. So that is the end of part 1. Make sure that you check the next video that is the part 2 where we complete the game.